had people that were very fine people on both sides. It's honestly crazy for me to have to comment on this right now because I'm still in the phase where I'm wondering if it was actually real life, what I just watched. It was one of the biggest messes that I've ever seen. I can't believe it happened. In the remarks he made today, the president revealed what he truly thinks about race in America. He revealed what he thinks about fundamental fairness, about a president's role in binding up the nation's wounds and appealing to the better angels of our nature, to quote another former president. Folks, what I just saw gave me the wrong kind of chills. Honestly, I'm a bit shaken from what I just heard. A bit shaken from what he just heard, uh, hearing from a number of folks who talk about this stuff every day. I want to bring in our panel now. Daryl Moody is a reporter with WDBO in, Atla in Orlando, rather, also from Atlanta. We are joined by a candidate for Atlanta City Council, Mo Ivory, who's also an attorney. HLN's Mike Alano still with us as well. Daryl, you're out there talking to people this morning. We heard from a couple of our callers. Was there an a sort of a common reaction that you found among the folks in Orlando this morning, or did it run the gamut? Well, this story has dominated our airwaves since the details began unfolding uh, Saturday afternoon. And uh, for the last three days, I've been out on the streets talking to Central Florida residents, and basically the responses that I've gotten fall into one of three camps. One, you're a Trump supporter. You think the Trump, uh, you think the president was identifying something that needed to be identified, and you didn't see anything wrong with his comments. Uh, there are those who are not Trump fans, and they say, you know, since the election, they've said Trump is a racist. This only affirms that he's being supported by racist organizations and groups. And for those folks, those folks, this affirms that to them. And then the third camp is uh, folks who say, you know, the president really didn't go far enough in condemning the violence and condemning groups specifically. And I'm going to go back to one of your callers who said, you know, in times of crisis like this and tragedies like the ones that unfolded Saturday in uh, Charlottesville, uh, Americans look to the president to be a calming force, a steady hand from the White House uh, there to bind our wounds, as Anderson Cooper just said. Uh, and, I, and, and that's not Trump's style. He doesn't take the high road. He's never taken the high road. And, and for those who... Uh, aren't Trump supporters or Trump haters, they really kind of expected the president to do that and to fulfill that role, and that's not what Trump did. It's interesting you say that. I was speaking with a number of people uh, out here in New York who were saying the same thing, that they want the president to step up and to step into that role of being that person, of being that, that higher voice, that moral compass in the country. Uh, Mo, oftentimes, too, uh, I find that this can get boiled down to politics. And yet, Mo, I would make the case that this has nothing to do with politics. This is about human decency. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I've never looked to Donald Trump for human decency or politics. And so I think that he's giving us exactly what he's always given us, somebody that we can't look to for any leadership. Um, I'm not surprised. I mean, every time I look to the TV and I know he's about to say something, I'm thinking to myself, what is this fool about to say now? No matter what it is, it's just so... Uh, disturbing that this could have been his moment. This could have been something that turned everything else that has happened in the last six months totally around and he could have gotten, you know, some sort of respect, not even necessarily support, but just respect from people like me and even people that voted for him that are thinking to themselves now, why did I do that? This was that moment and he could have stood for all Americans and he chose not to. He chose not to in the nastiest of ways, in ways that bring back and, and hearken a time that so many of us do not want to uh, introduce to our children. So now my 10-year-old son had a homework assignment to ask me about Charlottesville and what it all meant. And so I had to talk to him about the KKK. I had to talk to him about things that I wasn't necessarily right at this moment wanting to talk about on only the second week of school. So this was a moment for Donald Trump to be the leader he has never been in his life for anybody. And he chose not to be it for anything but a small population in our country that has tormented the existence for so many of us. And it's just time, I mean, it's just time to put that out there, to talk about the truth, and to have some real, serious, honest conversations of what America is. And part of starting that conversation, obviously, is talking to Americans about how they feel about what they heard yesterday. Mike, I know you have another caller uh, who wants to share their view with us. Yeah, yeah, Ken is with us in Arizona. Ken, what are your thoughts? Did the president cross the line? What do you think? Uh, I don't think he crossed the line. I think he raced the line. He has not done anything different than he has done before uh, when he was in private business, when he put out 
all the small businesses that installed windows for him. Uh, he said, all you're getting paid is the deposit. And that was it. He's been a racist and anti-Semitic for a long time. And I think he just showed his two colors. Hmm. He had a chance, as another caller mentioned, to, to stand up and make it his moment. And then he tries to equate George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, who have nothing to do with the Confederacy. The last I heard, the Confederacy existed in the 1860s, not in the 1700s. Yeah. And, and he has done nothing. You know, it goes back to when he was campaigning, when he knew more about ISIS than the generals. Yeah, and, and about he George has Washington a, he and has Jefferson, a good that brain. he said, well, they were slave owners, was, was his point a little bit later on uh, after he mentioned them specifically. And uh, Erica, you know, is, uh, by the way, Ken, thanks thanks for the call. Again, one eight seven seven tell hln is the number. You know, one of the fiercest critics was a Fox News commentator, Charles Krauthammer, when I get his quote right, saying that what Trump did was a moral disgrace. And, and he went on to say what Mo said and, some, and the caller said that, as president, you know, many look to the president to speak as the moral conscience of the country, and many would say he failed in that. We're going to continue to talk about this, continue to take your calls. A short break, but if you would like to share your opinion with us, our panel's going to stay with us as well. The number again, 877-TELL-HLN. We'll be right back.